Okay, good morning everybody. Mike Nemec here with some early morning grain and oilseed comments for this Friday, end of the week, November 17th. As a reminder, next week's going to be a shortened week. We'll have Thanksgiving holiday coming on up, so no trade next Thursday. But anyway, for the week, we're kind of a little bit on the defensive. Looking down over here, we have winter wheats down 9 to 13 cents, spring wheats down around 13 cents for the week. Corn's down around seven, beans down 13, meals down four dollars, and soybean oil's down 30 points. But magically, overnight, we seemingly always find support in the marketplace, and the overnight trade is up roughly around three cents for the wheat, two in corn, up roughly three in beans, buck and a half in the meal, and up roughly in the neighborhood of around 10 points for the soybean oil. I came back here and I've been looking at four topics, two of them which have come and gone and really have provided no upside lift to prices, that being number one, our U.S. harvest, crop progress, crop conditions, things of that nature. So once again, we're winding that down. And like I said, we didn't get any upside momentum in prices as far as that goes. The other thing, number two, was the USDA monthly report for November. Once again, those supply and demand st statistics remain very comfortable and non-threatening as far as an environmental where we should have a bullish rally going on in prices. The other two going forward in here is going to be our U.S. demand for exports. But once again, you go and look at that, and our wheat exports are running 5% behind a year ago. The USDA is looking for a 5% decline. We're looking at corn exports. They're 26% behind. The USA is looking for a 16% decline. Bean exports are running 15% behind or our sales. The USA is looking for, however, a 4% increase. Meal sales 1% behind. The USA is looking for a 5% increase there. And for our soy oil, 47% behind with the USA looking for a 28% decrease. So we're running behind a year ago. We're running behind what the USDA is forecasting. So our number three topic, demand, really doesn't show any type of uplifting in prices unless that turns around. And if we do rally the marketplace, all we're going to do is find ourselves uncompetitive versus other world suppliers as far as the S&D report goes, which leads us to our fourth topic of potential here and that's what's going to go on in South America as far as their crop goes. Right now on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being an alarm bell, I'd have to say that people are looking at Argentina with a continued dryness so maybe it's like a 1 or 2 right now so that'll be somewhat of a factor going forward in here as far as the potential. I don't know if you like this, uh, and I'll wrap it up real quick in here, I don't know if you like this exercise as well but after we go and look at our demand in South America Informa came out yesterday with some acreage numbers for this coming growing season here in the U.S. And if you do the math with what they came out with production, if you use this year's uh, usage numbers, next year for carryout numbers, and it's a rough graph right now, but you're still looking at an 850 million bushel wheat carryout, almost 2.7 billion bushel corn, and maybe in the neighborhood, depending on what your demand is, and with South America is 450 to 550 million bushel bean carryout. Once again, there too, a non-bullish environment. Trade is not short the grains along the oil seeds. We'll have a commitment trade report coming out after the close today. We'll also have a, a cattle on feed report, which will still continue to look at the demand side of the equation. But once again, we're not threatening carryouts and thus, once again, remain in a non-bullish environment. Once again, these are my opinions, not that of ADM or ADMIS. Have a good weekend. Thank you.